Welcome to the Posture Strength and Mobility Podcast. I'm Isaac Osborne, and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, hacks, interesting musings, and much more in short, digestible episodes. To learn more about how you can improve your posture, strength, and mobility, check out the show notes for links. Onward with the show. Welcome to episode nine, how to use a massage gun. In this episode, I will go over some things to keep in mind when using your massage gun so you can get the most out of it. I will talk about how a massage gun can move fascia, and I will give you an example of how to release the plantar fascia of the foot and some muscles that are related to the plantar fascia. All right, so jumping right in, people place it where it hurts. What are the pros and cons of this? So it's perfectly fine to take the massage gun as long as you're not placing it on a bone or something like that to place it where it hurts. So if you have a muscle belly somewhere that is in pain, it's okay to do that. I do it. Many people do it. It's absolutely fine. However, it is not the most efficient way to use the massage gun. And the reason why is, is muscles work in groups and muscles work in coordination with each other. So just trying to release a muscle that is sore doesn't mean that muscle needs to be released. It could be pulled taut. It could be very short. It could be one of those two things. And without really analysis of your joints, you don't really know. However, there's common, common issues that people have or, or common patterns of coordination of muscles that typically get people out of alignment and force a muscle into working too hard. And when a muscle is working too hard, it can get sore or if muscles pull taut, elongated, and it can be elongated and contracted, that can be sore as well. So we want to be able to get the most efficiency out of the massage gun so that you can get the most relief that you can. So Getting out of the habit of just going to that place that hurts is really, really important. The next thing that's really important is you're going to get more out of a massage gun if the muscle's relaxed. This is a this is a really common mistake where people will just sit in a position and they don't even know maybe that their hamstring or their quad is actually contracted while they're in the position of working on that part of the body while, while using the massage gun. And this is an issue because the vibration of the massage gun is important that the, all massage guns use what's called percussive therapy and percussive therapy vibrates muscles and every muscle, including the connective tissue has what's called sensory nerves in them. And sensory nerves respond to vibration. Vibration tends to create a relaxation in those sensory nerves so that muscles or connective tissue ends up releasing. So if you're contracting a muscle while you're using the massage gun, then you're not getting that muscle to relax. And most people want the muscle to to relax. There are massage guns, including the the one that I have, you can check out motionunlimited.net if you want to check out my massage gun. And it comes with protocols and specific muscle releases and protocols for plantar fascia, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go check that out at motionunlimited.net. The links are in the show notes. So if you're trying to release a muscle, you want that muscle to be relaxed. A massage gun can have the frequency, a higher frequencies or where the the massage gun is actually going a lot faster, that actually can stimulate a muscle. And if you're stimulating a muscle that needs to be released, well, that can be a problem. And you might get some endorphins because you're pressing really hard and it gives you some pain relief, but typically it's only temporary pain, pain relief. So it's really, really important that you work with the muscle in a relaxed position or slightly stretched position. And what I mean by slightly stretch is that you don't feel a stretch in it, but that muscle might be at length while you're working at it. So there's something that in body work that is really important 
and it's a technique in a way to release connective tissue and it's a technique to release muscles and it's called cross fiber work. Muscles have fibers in them and those fibers typically run in one direction. There's, there's different fiber orientations, but let's just keep it at that right now to keep it simple. Now these fiber orientations, so say, you know, for instance, if we talk about your quad from your hip to your knee, those, those fibers are running in that direction down the leg from the hip to the knee. And they're, they're like little tiny lines. If you were little tiny strings to go cross fiber to them, you would go from the outside of your leg across to the inside of your leg. Now what this does is it allows those fibers to spread more. Sure, you can run along those fibers and kind of thread those fibers as if you're combing your hair. However, cross fiber tends to put a different type of tension on the muscle. And then that vibration and sensory nerves and the tension on the muscle can react to where the muscle is going to release. In a lot of ways, you kind of have to trick muscles to release and relax. And this is where cross fiber work is really, really important. Most people just kind of go randomly all the way around on their massage gun. And yes, again, it can help. It can release muscles. It can relax things. I do the same thing. It feels great. However, if you really want to get specific on things, using cross fiber work is really important. There's a ton of different anatomy apps out there. There, You can Google certain muscles if you're thinking about muscles and look at the fiber orientation and then do some cross fiber work while you're working on that said area that you want to release. Another important thing is say the front of your hip hurts and you're, you're going around the hip, you're doing some cross fiber work. Now it's really important to actually treat an area around the hip instead of just that area because muscles, like I said earlier, muscles are going to coordinate with each other. And that coordination is really important where if you go ahead and go around the entire area, go down the leg, get some work down the leg, get the other hip too, because you may not know it or not. That other hip might be more short than the, than the hip that you're working on. The hip that you're working on might be elongated or vice versa. So it's important to hit multiple body parts on different sides of the body because the body is going to react that, to that. The body is going to react to you releasing the other side of the body and that vibration and how, how you're holding your body. Also, when you're working, think about if you're working on the left side of the body, use your right hand as much as you can. If you're working on the right side of the body, use your left hand as much as you can. So you're getting actually these cross body mechanics. Your body's going to be able to release more and relax more when you're using the opposite hand. That side of the body gets to let go completely while you're using it. Plus this gets a cross neurological function into your brain too. So can the massage gun move fascia? Absolutely, it can. However, and I'm going to show you some, some techniques to do this with the, the plantar fascia work that we're going to do here in a few minutes. It's all about the angle that you actually tilt the massage gun at and the speed at which you're trying to move the tissue and the muscle. Because fascia and muscle essentially are the same thing. Muscle is housed by fascia and it's basically the cocoon around it. It's the scaffolding for the muscles, scaffolding for the nerves, veins, arteries, everything. Fascia is amazing. However, we can move it. And also it's really important that muscles get to be released and focused on because of the neurology of the body. Muscle moves bone, nothing else does. Fascia is a framework. It's a support mechanism. It stores kinetic energy. So yes, fascia, fascia can move things, but only when something is really stretched. Like for instance, the Achilles tendon stores a lot of kinetic energy in it when it's stretched, just like a rubber band when you stretch it and let go. That rubber band returns to its original length of tension. 
So same with the Achilles tendon. And this is why it's, it's really important to, um, kind of hop jump rope, these sort of things every, every day or every couple of times a week, because that strengthens your Achilles tendon. Maybe I'll do a podcast on that at some point. So we're not going to go that into much depth on that. So now here's something that I, I tend to find very, very important. And I really want to hammer it home for you is that can it make your physical therapy, massage therapy treatments, acupuncture or more, or personal training more effective? And yes, absolutely it can. And the reason why is if you're working with somebody that is really taking a look at your your movement patterns, um, your structural patterns, your posture, those sort of things, or there are specific areas in your body that this professional is telling you that you need to be re- need to release in order to get shifts and change changes in your body to get out of the situation that you're in. It's important to know that massage therapy treatments, physical therapy, manipulation of any kind that people are doing is it's effective. Yes. However, smaller quantities of release on a consistent basis over time is much more effective. And I'm saying this because I'm not trying to take away from these skilled practitioners and what they're doing. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it more effective for you and for them when you walk in the door. And I'll give you a great example of this. A good friend of mine has been suffering from plantar fasciitis and I haven't been able to get over to him and help him out. And he has an integrator and he's, you know, he's like, oh, I've been using it, but it doesn't seem to help. He's been going to acupuncture and getting some manipulation and it's been, it's been helping. He's been reducing his pain. Now I finally got a chance to go over to his house and talk to him about it and show him some areas that are really important to get to when treating plantar fasciitis. And Within that time frame that we were working together, we reduced his pain. I think he was at this point, he was, he was at a level of two or three on the pain scale and we were able to reduce his pain down to a one. His pain would come back up the next day. He would do those areas that I was showing him on both legs and he continued to do that over the next few days and I think it was maybe four, maybe five days later. Now he's completely pain free. He's back to his activities, which he wasn't doing before. He's, he cycles a lot. He runs, he works out quite a bit. He's a very active person and he wasn't able to do that. He actually took the last few weeks off, I think two or three weeks off and wasn't able to do his sports because there was so much pain in his foot. Now, he's going to go back to his acupuncturist and manual therapist and be able to get more out of those sessions because during the time in between these sessions, that consistency of releasing that muscle and stretching and doing exercises and so forth, we're helping him get that dysfunctional pattern out, getting those fascial restrictions out, getting those muscles to release the body always responds better to smaller amounts of stimuli that are consistent over time. This is, this is the mother of all change. If you will, consistency is the mother of all change. You have to be consistent in something to change something. And pain is a great, it's a great baseline for us as people, practitioners, Anyone that is uses pain as a baseline that is in this case, using the massage gun would go over an area, release certain muscles. And if you feel pain relief, Hey, that's an indication that the stimulus that you're giving your body is helping. Now, if it does that once and then the next time you do it, does it again And again, so that's more information for you that you're on the right track. Now, if you're working those areas like he was before, before I showed him the certain areas to release, 
he wasn't getting the pain relief. So why would he even want to use massage gun? This is a useless tool in that sense, right? So it's all about how you use the massage gun and how you're consistent with it, taking that baseline of your pain and comparing that to what happens after you use the massage gun. So think about these things, ask questions. And if you have your own massage gun and you want access to the protocols that I have, you're more than welcome to. You can follow a link in uh, the show notes, go to, you can purchase the protocols on my website and have access to all the protocols that I have, back pain, neck pain, plantar fasciitis, knee pain. I have specific muscle releases that you can do if, you, if you're working with a PT, massage therapist, etc. Or if you don't have a massage gun and you're interested, you can go also purchase uh, my brand of massage gun on my website and uh, that comes with the protocols. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at a couple key areas for you to release the lower leg and how to release the plantar fascia. All right. So if the audio sounds different, I've actually changed the microphone and uh, now I'm sitting on the floor and I have one leg kind of crossed in a bent position. And now, and I have this leg in a cross bent position because with the leg in this position, I'm going to be able to treat a certain amount of musculature that is going into the foot. So from the knee to the ankle, and if you palpate your, sh your shin bone, the bone right here on the front, behind that bone, closest to me in this case, I have my right knee bent. It's like a half uh, crisscross applesauce position. Um, or yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So. Now, if I palpate behind there, there's all that soft tissue and muscle back there. And I have two examples here. I have my my massage, my mini integrator massage gun, and then I have the large integrator massage gun. And they both have different heads on it, and that's why I'm choosing to uh, show you these two different heads and two different guns because the mini is really easy for handheld and it has decent power, but um, the head of it is a flat head, and so with the flat head, you're going, to, you're going to be able to get different angles and move tissue differently based off of how you angle it. Okay, so from the knee to the ankle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the knee. I'm going to go just behind, just behind this bone called the tibia or the shin bone, and I'm going to move down. But notice that I'm keeping... I'm keeping the, the massage gun at a 45 degree angle. So think about a 45 degree angle. I'm pointing towards my ankle behind that bone and I'm just gonna run slowly along. I'm actually moving a lot faster than I would if I was just treating myself here or somebody else. Uh, but for demonstration pur purposes here and for the listeners, I'm doing my best to describe this all the way down to the ankle bone. So what we're getting is this deep musculature that that is behind the tibia and these muscles have tendons that go under the arch of the foot so it's really important to release these so i'm going in the same direction as the fibers of these muscles for the most part as i go down the back of the leg and i'm not pressing really hard i'm just pressing just a little bit and i'm and this angle, what's great about this angle is that it creates basically, imagine like a bulldozer for a second, just kind of bulldozing dirt. Well, it, that angle is going to, to grab the connective tissue and the fascia around the muscles and push it down. It's going to elongate it down. All right, that's one way you can do that and work with that tissue there. The other way is now I'm switching to the large integrator, the large massage gun, and it has this fork attachment on it. And this fork attachment, there's two prongs to it, and that allows me to, again, get at another, uh, another different angle. And this time, I'm actually going to go down the leg, but I'm, I'm going from the, the bone, the tibia, and I'm moving along to the back side of my calf. This would be the cross fiber direction. And really only one piece or one part of that fork attachment is actually is actually touching uh, the tissue here. 
but it's so pinpointed that that particular attachment is going to get more of a cross fiber. It's going to weave in between those fibers of the muscle. So that happens I, as I do this, I'm just kind of slowly just kind of moving. I'm starting towards the bone and then moving back towards the back side of the leg. And be careful as you get down close to the ankle, there's not much tissue depth there or fat or mass of muscle. And so it's really easy to hit nerves. So I would stop if I were you, I would stop just before you get above, above uh, um, the ankle bone. Now, we're going to take that the same tool and the same tool and I'm, I'm shifting my position so you can see I'm now grabbing my right foot my knee is still bent and I actually have the massage gun lying on the floor so now that the massage gun is lying on the floor the fork attachment is actually horizontal now and what I can do is I can run it along the floor and as I as I hit my foot and press up, I'm just sliding the massage gun on the floor. And as it, as it moves along, it hits my foot. It goes from the outside of my heel to the inside of my heel and then back. I go back to the outside of the heel and then it moves to the inside of the heel. So again, now I'm going cross fiber to the plantar fascia and to the muscles of the foot. And then, as I do that, I can just move up the foot and all the way up to the ball of the foot and into the toes. So that's an example of how you can use cross fiber. And if you're moving slowly and you have it on a low speed, the massage gun will move the tissue. And it's going to apply it's go, it's going to apply that vibration effect that helps release the muscles and decrease pain and open things up. All right, you guys, that's today's podcast. Hope you liked it. Check out the website for more information on the integrator and there's a sh in the show notes. If you want access to the protocols, check out the links below and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you liked it, please subscribe and leave a positive review so others may find it and get help too. Check out the show notes for links on how to win a mini integrator massage gun, posture strength and mobility classes that focus on corrective exercises, or self-myofascial release protocols for neck pain, back pain, knee pain, plantar fasciitis, and much more with my massage gun, The Integrator. Until next time, keep exploring your body and stay curious.